Patrick Audier said a limit could be set on the exchange rate of the franc to the euro. He joins us now. Uh, Mr. Audier, thank you so much for being on the show. We also heard uh, from Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs saying actually it, it's now time for the Swiss National Bank to start buying some francs again. But you think what there should be a peg to the euro? That would be the, the safest solution? No, I think I'm not uh, a peg. I think the Swiss National Bank should take its measure independently from any um, uh, political pressure. And in this respect, I think it has uh, started to do so in a very correct way. But does it need to do more? Because it has been doing so and sometimes it's backfired and they've actually been left with debt. If the franc rises any further, well, how much will it, will it hurt the Swiss banks? Well, I think, you know, the interests of the Swiss banks are the same uh, also uh, of, uh, as the one of the Swiss economy entirely today. And I think the Swiss franc is a consequence of the weakness of the other currencies and not uh, the country. So in this respect, the Swiss National Bank has to take all measures that uh, it can to make sure that there is a reasonable uh, level uh, according to which uh, it should intervene. Now, what happens if the Swiss National Bank can't actually make use of this on its own? A lot of economists say that, you know, we need to have some kind of coordination between the G7. Is there anything that, apart from the Swiss National Bank, the banks can do separately to try not to take as big a hit? Yes, I think the banks in general, in all countries, not only in Switzerland, must, must uh, ensure their vital role. Their vital role is to fuel the economy, make sure credit is, uh, is not getting into any problematic. Second is to make sure deposits are safe. And thirdly, is to make sure savings can uh, uh, be profitably and safely uh, growing. So in this respect, the banks will do their role and they will make sure in, in particular that the liquidity is uh, correctly used. All right, but what do you say to the comments of Christine Lagarde, the IMF managing director, saying that actually we need recapitalization of the banks and we need it very soon? I think the Swiss banks have shown that uh, this problematic was understood all, already uh, a long time ago. We've taken the measures and I think the rest of the international community can take example of uh, what we've done in Switzerland and we uh, will be very appreciative of being in a competitive situation when it comes to, to see those standards evolve. And it, it does, it's also true that of course the Swiss banks in certain respects, for example, the amount that they need to hold uh, was much stricter than some of the other European banks and certainly some of the, the worldwide bank rivals as well. But in in terms of what we're seeing at the moment, there's so much volatility, so much investor uncertainty. Again, what's the message that, that you would give to investors that look at these stock markets tank and are scared of putting their money into banks? Well, I think, first of all, the Swiss banks are in a position today to be subject to more, st more stringent uh, principle and uh, requirements than any other financial institution of the world because they had prudent policies in the past and because their quality and earning potential is very strong. So I think this is a positive message. Secondly, it can only be strong if it remains on a competitive basis uh, in, a playing, in a level playing field. So we are uh, asking for that level playing field to be uh, ensured. And in this respect, we will have to make sure that what we've done in Switzerland can be followed up by uh, the rest of the community. The current situation should have no impact on that if everybody works in the same direction. We want to solve an issue that is an issue of the safety, security of the banking sector. Switzerland is one of the most secure and uh, safe uh, financial place in the world. But so what's your biggest concern? That actually investors don't understand that and don't make a difference between uh, Swiss banks and other banks or the fact that actually we may be looking at liquidity crisis that would affect European banks across the, world, the globe? No, I think it's not a concern. We, we note that uh, the investors in general are looking at Switzerland as a safe harbor. This is one of the reasons why the Swiss franc is going higher and higher. And it's also due to the fact that the banks here protect uh, the investors and the investments in general, perhaps in a better way than in some other places. So I don't see there's a problem here. I see that uh, what is a, there's a need of coordination indeed and that we have taken an initiative that could be followed up upon and I hope as rapidly as possible by the rest of the international community. How crucial is it, though, that you have these uh, tax agreements with Germany and the UK and also that you're not blacklisted, that the Swiss banks are not blacklisted as tax havens by the OECD? Well, Switzerland has been uh, successful in showing that the clients can uh, have trust in them. They've protected their interests while at the same time changed completely their way of uh, collaborating with the foreign authorities on the tax issue by innovating and proposing a solution that can, can combine both the tradition value of uh, privacy of the Swiss uh, depositors uh, with the collaboration in, in matters uh, uh, such as uh, tax evasion and fight against tax evasion. So, but what do you think that these tax issues will actually be behind you? 
Well, we uh, have a number of tax issues to solve, but these are problematic issues from the past, legacy issues. This will be resolved, and what is uh, the, the fact is, is that uh, we can now uh, concentrate like uh, we should on the needs uh, of the economy, of the investors, and look at the future rather than the past. So taking an initiative like we've done with uh, Germany and England is, uh, is probably a good example that could be a signal to the rest of the international community that uh, there can be innovative alternative solutions with, uh, with regard to uh, fighting uh, tax evasion. All right, Patrick Odier, thank you so much for joining us today. That was the president of the Swiss Banking Association.